it. Welcome to San Francisco's G News, where you get all of your gay in just one day. We bring you the top LGBT stories from the left coast and around the globe. With a unique perspective only our gay bubble can provide. Tube in every week and keep in the know on the latest trends, hot topics, and who's messing with your human rights now. So join us with your hosts, Celsa Boulay and Lisa Cohen. Get all your gay in just one day. From the city by the bay with San Francisco's G News. Hello everyone and welcome to a super special episode of G News. It's, it's our, our 100th episode. episode. <laughs> this week on G News. We have former California State Senator Mark Leno. Community activists Gary Virginia and Cameron Steele. The incredible women fighting for our LGBT seniors, Dr. Karen Scaltetti and Sylvia Vargas. Music superstars BB Sweetbriar and Saturn. Plus we have the groovy bartender, Sam McGinnis is in the house. All this day coming your way. On this super special episode, 100th episode of, of G, G News. News. Hi everyone and welcome to the 100th episode of G News. Who knew when we started the show that we would be here three years later and 100 episodes in. We have a fabulous show for you in store, but we're going to do things a little differently because it's our 100th. So instead of covering the, the headline stories and the hot topics, we're going to be featuring some fabulous guests today. But before that, let's get a little groovy. Yes, we have the groovy bartender here today with a special 100th hello. episode cocktail. Hello, hello. Happy 100th. Thank you. You're welcome. I brought you some Unicorn's Delight. Oh. Oh my God, it's so pretty. You can't see this, but there's like gl glitter and confetti and all kinds of stuff all over it. This is Sam McGinnis. He's the groovy bartender. He has his very own YouTube show where he develops drinks like this and then he shows us how we can make them at home. This cocktail specifically I made for you two on your 100th episode. Thank you. Um, simple to make. Cake vodka, mm -hmm. strawberry vodka, some vanilla soy milk, or if you're not lactose intolerant, you can use some half and half and a little bit of vanilla extract and some fresh strawberry puree. Oh my God. Shake heavily, strain into a martini glass, and I've rimmed the glass with graham cracker crust and edible confetti. Oh my goodness. And it's you know, delicious. You would think this would be really sweet. I'm listening to what you're saying. It's not. No. It's, it's perfect. It's, it's it tastes like cake. It's I like to make smooth. cocktails that get you in trouble. That's <laughs> oh my gosh, that's well, us. That's, that's, a, that's what we do here on G News. We get into trouble. So, well, now that we're perfectly plied with alcohol, <laughs> let's get to the show. Thank you, Sam. Ruby. As you all know, politics is a keystone in our news segment. When we were talking about who we wanted to have on to talk about politics on this special episode, our guest today was a unanimous decision. Jeff Kors, the government policy director for the National Center for Lesbian Rights and former executive director of Equality California, has said of our guest today, there is no legislator in the country who has done more to advance LGBT rights. He has been an integral, informative fixture in the San Francisco politics since 1998, when Mayor Willie Brown appointed him to the San Francisco Board of Supervisors. He then went on to become a member of the California State Assembly from 2002 to 2008, and then the first openly gay man elected to the California State Senate from 2008 to 2016. We're very happy to share that he has recently announced his candidacy for San Francisco Mayor 2019. Oh, Mark Leno, thank everyone. You. Thank you. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, applause, Yay. applause. <laughs> it seems like um, so many people today are acutely aware of what is going on in politics, not just in our country, but around the world. Um, from young and old, from every walk of life, from every political spectrum, it seems like everyone's walking, uh, watching and discussing and partaking in politics like I've never mm -hmm. seen before. What do you think is attributing to this? Um, is it our current unique administration or is there some other reason for this hyper-focus of, of politics today? We can speculate and also conclude uh, who's responsible, but I think we're all engaged and we are all fighting mm -hmm. because we're fighting for our lives. This is serious stuff and not just we, LGBTQ community, but every minority community, refugee community, women, everybody, mm -hmm. we're all under assault. And by the way, congratulations on your 100th episode. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my God, and for the honor of being here with you. This oh, is really, course, really terrific. Yeah. The Thank honor you. Is ours. Oh, yeah, by the way, welcome. Thank <laughs> you. It, it doesn't cross my mind that I hadn't been invited 199 oh, other no. times. I'm the second person this episode that has said that. Well, you weren't running for mayor before, so. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Where's no, my it, fan? Yeah. <laughs> he just got busted. <laughs> just kidding. Thank, uh, good Thank things you come me. to. Yeah, those who wait. <laughs> Um, 
among the many bills that you've authored, co-authored, mm -hmm. signed, um, affecting issues such as health care, affordable housing, small businesses, the working class, and the environment, and to hearken back to what Mr. Kors quote said, um, there's a special attention to the LGBT uh, community and issues. How important for the LGBT community, especially considering Trump's recent little speech that he had for the Value Voter Summit, um, is it to have LGBT politicians and lawmakers? Well, it was certainly one of Harvey Milk's most profound proclamations that we have to be there. It's all well and good to have well-meaning friends and allies speaking for us, but nothing matters as much as having us present. And I think one of the uh, ways to prove that is that prior to 2003, and I was just fortunate by timing to have arrived in Sacramento at that time, but it was then that we formed our first LGBT legislative caucus. So prior to that, there had been four lesbians elected to state assembly. Before John Laird and I got there in the 2002 elections, the first openly gay men. But at that time in history, California ranked among the very bottom of states in legal protections for LGBT civil rights. As a result of there then being five of us and working together, and uh, timing is everything, so it was a confluence of occurrences. But by the time I left 16 years later, as a result of term limits, and because of the great leadership of Jeff Coors and Equality California, we passed law after law after law after law. And then when marriage was put into place, we now, California, have the most legal protections for our rights of any state in the country. I was um, at a fundraiser, as were you, yes. for the Tenderloin Neighborhood Development Center. Yes. Uh, which is uh, the, the children's center, it's a family center for underrepresented uh, families in the Tenderloin. And I believe they raise, I'm going to say, between 35000 and 45000 to throw you in the pool. Your, t your title of your costume. I was Humpty Trumpty. Humpty, Humpty Trumpty. Trumpty. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the reasons that we wanted to talk about this is that you, these kinds of events um, bring a lot of humor and lightness to politics and, and the necessity and things that we're, we're doing. It raised a lot of money, but was it, it sounded like it was fun. It, it was fun, and it was silly. I, I have to say, I, I've never been on a public stage looking so ridiculous <laughs> in my life. It's so cute. Uh, so, uh, Tenderloin Neighborhood Development Corporation, Corporation. actually, it's, okay. it's an affordable housing entity, and they build more affordable housing than anybody else in town. They've built over 2,100% affordable buildings, 3,600 affordable units for those who are earning below 30% of area and median income. Really? So that's people who are earning in the neighborhood of $20,000, $30,000 a year. This is who they house. And then about 20% of all their employees come from their residential population. So they even have employment for those low-income people okay. who are living in their units. The pool toss, which was having its 25th annual at the Phoenix Motel, which is just a lot of fun, Love and it's a, it's a wacky, only in San Francisco kind of party, uh, raised that night close to $500,000, yeah. wow. specifically for after-school programs for Tenderloin youth. And yeah. you were scaling a building because... Well, that was for another good cause. In the heels of Donna Sache, <laughs> following the heels of Donna Sache. How far down did you rappel to get this shot? So this was a fundraiser for Outward Bound, which oh, does programs yeah. ranging from 48 hours to a week or a month mm -hmm. to send people out into natural settings and, uh, and testing their their own survival skills. So this uh, participants in this fundraiser had to go out and raise, I think, a minimum of uh, $10,000 or so to have the opportunity to rappel off the 48th wow. floor rooftop of the Hilton Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> well, take your money. Bye. <laughs> So oh it, and Not it, it's, it's, it's pretty <laughs> thrilling. But what encouraged me to first do it? This was the third time I had done it. Oh my. Was that uh, my good friend Donna Sachet had told me she had done right. it, and so that gave me some courage. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say to someone who is contemplating going into politics? I would highly encourage everyone and anyone. And the best way to pursue is just dig in wherever you are. Whatever you're doing, do more of. Whatever you're giving, give more, and see where it leads. 
Well, we put a lot of information down below. I didn't, I didn't want to say all, but there's a lot down below, um, specifically <laughs> about the, d the parties that are local here. There's a Democratic and Republican Party, whichever one you decide. But most importantly, Mark Leno's information, so if you'd like to contribute <laughs> to his campaign, you can certainly do that and find out more about Can we do this? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> For more information about him um, and his platform. Yay. But just information in general is down there. Thank you so much for taking some time to spend it with us. It's Thank my you. great pleasure. I'll be here for your 200th, right? Yes. yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Activism is defined as efforts to promote, impede, or direct social, political, economic, or environmental reform or stasis with the desire to make improvements in society. We call this segment Community Activists, otherwise known as the angels among us. <laughs> Oh, that's cute. <laughs> and if you were ever thinking of helping out or giving back, pay attention and take a cue from our two guests right here. Fans of G News may be familiar with Cameron Steele. She has guest hosted for G News numerous times. She has locked me in that little thing and put me away. <laughs> and in, in addition to hosting and creating her own show, Happy Hour with Cameron Steele, she sits on the board of the Richmond Ermit Aid Foundation, whose benefit Help is on the way is one of the Bay Area's largest benefits and the major source of funding for many of local AIDS, food, and youth service programs. She is also a princess. Yeah. <laughs> she is Imperial Crown Princess to be exact. Uh, she is with the Imperial Court System, which is one of the oldest LGBT nonprofit organizations in the world. We have Gary Virginia whose resume is so long that we would need to do an entire show dedicated just to him. <laughs> which we will talk about that. <laughs> He's been tirelessly working for our community since 1996, but you might be most familiar with him with his work with the San Francisco LGBT Pride Parade and Celebration. Um, he's also worked, or, or you might know him from his holiday or Pride brunches, they both benefit the Positive Resource Center. He's currently working with the San Francisco Bay Times, Gay with, Gays Without Borders, Crew to Kink, and the Positive Resource Center. Oh, and he's also a prince. He is the imperial prince to the Council of Emperors with the Inter <laughs> International Court System. Everybody, please welcome Cameron Steele and Gary Virginia. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> you know, I gotta say, when we were doing the research and Celso was sending me things and handing me papers and I'm going through all this stuff going, oh my stars, this is amazing, both of you. Both of you, this is absolutely amazing. Um, the work you've done has gone beyond what I've seen in a long time. What motivates you to, to keep going, to do it, to seek out new organizations? Or continue with the ones that you've yes. even founded. Oh, you've been doing this the longest. I'm gonna let you go first. <laughs> Ladies first. Oh, okay, that's sweet. That would be me. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on the day. <laughs> it totally depends on the day. Mo what motivates? I would say that I've been pretty lucky in my life to always, you know, have food on the table and a supportive family, and and I feel like there's a lot of people in the world who just don't have everything that we have. So I, I almost feel like it's my my duty, my obligation, not to mention being very enjoyable, to go out and try to help others. Gary, I think um, <laughs> honestly, activism, volunteerism, fundraising, a lot of it stems from your upbringing. I was raised in a mostly blue collar working class family in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And, um, you know, I watched my mother as a single parent since I was 14, um, take on three jobs to keep a roof over our head once my father had left our family. And I think when you experience struggle, it enhances your empathy and compassion. And, um, you know, any, any way that you can help others just feels really good. You know, giving and receiving to me are the same. One's not better than the other. Uh, there's blessings in receiving and blessings in giving. And um, having been diagnosed with HIV since 1988 and then full-blown AIDS and on the path of dying in 1995, I had specific charities that helped me stay in my apartment and get benefits counseling. And that really cemented my decision that once I got through my own emergency, I would be there to help other people in similar situations. Why do you think now is an important time for um, community activism within the LGBT community? Because it's changing. It, it seems like we were in a place where we were getting comfortable, we had marriage equality, there's protections you know, in the workplace, all that was happening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, we're like, yeah, <laughs> it just feels like it's starting to be inched out from under us now. So 
I feel more energized than ever to try to f basically fight back. Looking back and, and comparing it to today, how, how, much, how much have we come and how far have we come back? Well, I think in any civil rights movement, there's an arc. Leaders like Kate Kendall at NCLR and other major activists like Cleve Jones, they understand that. People that have survived the AIDS crisis for 30 years understand that it's not just a steady climb up, that there's always challenges to it. As somebody who's 57 years old and been doing this for several decades, it's easier now to be an activist than ever. There's really no excuse. With social media and the ability to communicate instantly around the world, with a lot of really fine-tuned organizations like MoveOn.org or HIV AIDS, breast cancer, any disease, they all have really solid structures for organization that make it as easy as getting on an email list, signing a petition, getting a notice and going to a demonstration, uh, donating with a click of your cell phone or whatever to donate a dollar here, a dollar there. Gary, uh, you created Crew to Clink. Crew to Kink? Crew to Kink. <laughs> now, how, is, how does that work in the community? If Mardi Gras and festive, you know, what were you seeking? What were you hoping? What are you accomplishing? Crew to Kink was created in my mind several years before I started it. And it was out of a necessity of seeing uh, volunteer and fundraising fatigue. I love Mardi Gras. I don't know why I must have lived in New Orleans in a past life. But <laughs> Who doesn't like Mardi Gras? You know, drink, <laughs> drinking on the street, decorating yeah. beads. Shout What's not to like, like right? <laughs> yeah. So we're coming up on our 15th anniversary already. Mazel Time flies. Oh and we're gosh. raising money for Larkin Street Youth Services this year. Mm -hmm. uh, we feel like homelessness is still the number one critical issue in San Francisco with affordable housing. And we wanted to help LGBT people and all youth to secure housing and it's a very good organization. So February 10th at the cafe, uh, Castro and Market Street, everyone's invited. It's a huge event where we have uh, the election of the new king and queen. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, a performance, it's a tableau show where we pick a theme and all the performances are around it. We have Cajun food, we have drink specials. Well, you work with a with a pretty significant organization, Cameron. Can you tell us about the Richmond Ermit Aid Foundation? I can. I've been with them for a couple of years now. Um, started on the auction committee and I'm a full board member, which is awesome. What I love about the board is that they are a full working board. Nobody just comes in and signs a check. Everybody is involved. Um, but it started uh, 23 years ago, hopefully, <laughs> right, with two moms of two men who passed away from AIDS. So what we do basically is throw these Broadway style productions, who doesn't love that, to have these galas with the music uh -huh. and all the, the dancing and everything and at wonderful um, venues around the city, like the Herbst Theater, that's our, where our summer gala is. You have both been involved with the Imperial Court System. I mean, it's been around since 1965. What is keeping its longevity? It has grown, it is powerful. Talk about being a prince and princess of the ice, of the imperial court system. Sure. You wanna, <laughs> okay, <laughs> we've got this, yeah. Um, so yes, as you said, we started in 1965, so we're going on 52, 53 years. Jose Sario is the founder, and it did happen all here in San Francisco. Um, so we are the founding mother and the model <laughs> is essentially that the community elects an Emperor Empress every year and they lead their fundraising efforts for the year and they can also appoint other people to their court. Thus you can have an Imperial Crown Prince or Princess or a myriad of titles to build your circle of friends to raise money. So that's now happening in Canada, Mexico and the United States with over 70 chapters and they're literally raising millions of dollars annually. It's fantastic. That's One of the things I love about all of these organizations is like you were talking about that Ermit, uh, Richmond Ermit Aid Foundation, the ICS, the Inter International Court System, is that they throw these fantastic parties. Mm -hmm. They're so much fun. They're big, they're glitzy, they're, they raise a lot of money. So we, we always do this in our community, don't we? We have a lot of fun raising a lot of money for a lot of good. That's actually in our mission statement. <laughs> <laughs> raise the money, but have fun doing it. If you're there's, not having fun. <laughs> we want to mention there's a new movie that's going to be coming out by our friends David Lastman and Jethro uh, Peddling Hug. It's 50 Years of Fabulous, and it's chronicling and telling the story of the international court system. So when that comes out, we'll keep you abreast of where you can go watch it and see it. Gary, Cameron, thank you so much for being here. Thank this you. Is Cheers to your 100th awesome. episode. Thank, thank you. you. Thank and thank to you. the next 100. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to be discussing a subject that isn't always fun to talk about, but hopefully everybody will experience getting older.
Yeah, you know, we notice that a lot of people don't actually start talking or start planning for their aging personally or for their families, um, but it does kind of creep up on you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, all of a sudden, you're older. <laughs> Our guests today are from Open House. <laughs> totally. Our guests today are from Open House, the LGBT senior housing and services organization that is changing the landscape and the complexion of aging in our community. Please welcome Executive Director, Dr. Karen Scoltetti. Thank you. And Community Engagement Manager, Sylvia Vargas. Yay. Welcome. Thank you so much Welcome for having us. us. Yes. Great. You, you know, aging is challenging enough. You know, everything starts to go and button. <laughs> <laughs> My warranty but, is definitely ready. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, there are definitely unique uh, issues dealing with aging in the LGBT community. You know, people of color, trans, LGBT seniors. Mm -hmm. What would you say are some of the major things facing housing and living as your age in the LGBT community? Well, I think you, before you even talk about housing or any of those things, you have to start with ageism, right? Like, yeah. why don't we want to talk about it? Why do we want to think about it? Why does the first thing that we go to when we start talking about aging is challenges, right? right. We could say, wow, let's talk about the people who have the most experience, who know, n know more than everybody else out there and all the accomplishments that they've had. And then after we talked about that, we could say, hey, do they need any help? Are there things that we need oh, to see. give to them? But we don't. We start with the challenges and the loss and the, the things you can't do anymore. Um, and I think that that sort of profound view on aging is actually the number one challenge, maybe, that people across face. Um, and I certainly think that ageism is alive and well here in San Francisco. I oh, can yeah. talk more about yeah. that if you yeah. want. But yes. um, So I think that's, that's number one. Um, and then for LGBT seniors in particular, so there's this risk of becoming invisible, right? If people don't want to talk about aging, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if they don't view your experience as an asset. Um, but LGBT seniors are even more likely to face isolation and that feeling of being invisible. Um, they were very unlikely to have had children. Mm -hmm. um, many of them lost their complete uh, social network when they went through the AIDS epidemic in this city. Profound, profound experience for people. Um, much less likely to have any contact with other um, peoples from their family of origin. Mm. And so as you age without that social support in place, if you face challenges, health challenges, social challenges, retirement, um, you can find yourself in a position where you don't have very many connections. And unfortunately, that sort of builds on itself. Lisa and I met uh, Dr. Marcy Adelman yeah. at the San Francisco um, LGBT Pride Parade Press Conference. Um, where she was being honored with the Lifetime Achievement Grand Marshal Award. Yay, Yay Dr. Marcy. Yay. Um, can you tell us a little bit about um, Dr. Adelman and Open House, yeah. and um, which she and her late partner founded? Yeah. Right. Um, you know, it's funny. Marcy stopped by um, the other day to the office, and she bought Open House's original name was the Rainbow Adult. Uh, coalition for housing <laughs> and they made these these uh, buttons that said R-A-C-H star rock star right so Marcy Adelman she's like the original oh, rock star oh, like um, of this movement um, and just one of the bravest people I've ever met um, I haven't didn't have the chance to meet Jeanette but I hear she was equally rock star status imagine, from everything yeah. that I know um, but really the story Marcy tells is standing in line at the Castro Theater she's looking around and she says where are elders where are they there are elders LGBT people older than us, where are they? Right. Um, and can we build a place for them to go as they age? And, and where will we go? <laughs> uh, and so the, the organization really started with the dream of what would LGBT welcoming senior housing look like? Whether it was affordable, whether it was a mixed income model, mm -hmm. what, what, where, where, what would happen there? Where could we build that safe place for people to have that social support uh, network and somewhere in the, in the city. city? And stay in the city, yeah. right? So that was really where the organization started. Um, and then we've, we've grown along the way. The, the first service she thought of was sort of like, well, it won't be enough. We'll never build enough housing by itself, which is true by the way, now even more than ever. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but she said, well, we've got to make the places where people are going feel safe. So mm -hmm. whether it's your apartment complex, the person who works there, whether it's your doctor, whether it's a social worker coming to your house. So they invented this training program. We call it our cultural humility training program that basically goes out and helps people understand what do LGBT seniors need. We do some of the training. We wow. have seniors who participate in some wow. of the training. Um, so that's really our first service, so to speak. And then we've grown along the way where now we have um, um, a whole range of services that we provide for people that we can we can talk about oh, here today. Impressive. But that was sort of the the start. Yeah, well, and Sylvia, um, just 95 Laguna, uh, we understand, <laughs> is going to be renamed 
for Dr. Edelman and her partner, which is incredibly exciting. Um, so talk about that property, and I think you have new projects and properties coming about, possibly? Yeah, it's a very exciting time for us. Um, as a matter of fact, we're in the midst of preparing for our grand groundbreaking, which is going to be Yay. held at 95 <laughs> Laguna, uh, and it's going to be amazing. It's meaningful in so many ways now that we've already in our first phase, in our first building, just to be able to see folks living in the building already in the first units at 55 Laguna, we can only imagine what it's going to be like at 95 Laguna when it's 79 units. It's yeah. really creating oh, a it's community. It's so exciting to drive by that first property. Yeah. Is yeah. So it's like, it's oh my gosh, so cool. yeah. the views. I mean, let's, let's remember too, that's our first yeah. One in First San one Francisco, ever, oh, which is guys, really hard to believe. It's been so long, but yeah, what happened? Yeah, yeah, we got it. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have to move to Boca. We can stay here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. And that, you know, 55 and 65 Laguna will be always be a really important building because it was it was the, the first. first. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's also a beautiful building, right? It's a 96 year old building that had been forgotten. It was falling down. It was kind of a sad you know? yeah. Yeah. Sad, like, What right? are they going to do with this place? And then they, yeah. they go up, they peel back the paint on the walls and reveal original murals from the 1920s and 30s that they restored oh, I didn't know and that. brought back yeah. to life. It, it's exactly our mission, right? Here's um, something older that people forget. Um, you peel back the paint a little bit, there's incredible beauty and experience. What are some of the things that people can do to prepare for their own aging? I mean, there's like, you know, we have disaster plans for earthquakes and things like that. Sure. People plan for financially for like savings accounts, but what can we do? Nobody thinks about it. No. What, what we can do, for, especially in this community. You want to start? I'll, I'll jump in. <laughs> I'm not shy. Yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. And I think, you know, presently we invite community members to come in and we have amazing workshops around helping people age. What does that mean to you? It's different for everyone. So whether it's finances, whether it's housing, whether it's a feeling of building a sense of community, mm -hmm. um, we tap into that and we invite outside organizations to partner up and bring their wealth of knowledge so that they can meet our community and also understand, you know, that's an exchange. They understand our community, where they're living. We, we use the phrase, we meet people where they're at. And I would say, what's the best thing you can do to prepare for your aging is, are you currently building a community where you include people of every age? We all have to be invested and believe that the LGBT community is better, better off, stronger, richer, if we're including older adults. Are you creating the community today that includes older people? That means when you're older, you've built a community that you get to be a part of. Right. Um, and I think the other thing that we see over and over again and is um, you know, what kinds of connections do you have in your life? I mean, the, the research on loneliness has shown that loneliness is as bad for your health as smoking two packs yeah. of cigarette a day, right? So, so what kinds of meaningful connections are you building? Um, Facebook doesn't do it, sorry. Um, <laughs> Twitter doesn't seem to do no, it. But YouTube is great. <laughs> so, yeah, so on an individual level, you know, ask yourself, how many people do I know um, older than me? Am I benefiting from their experience or not? Am I utilizing that wisdom in my life or am I missing that in my life? You guys are still trying to raise another two million, two million dollars. to finish yeah. the next property yes. with the Dr. Edelman uh, yeah. building, right? Yeah, and then so, so it feels easy to feel like, oh, open house is done, we have this beautiful building, um, we've really expanded our services, but we launched an expansion campaign five years ago for around seven million dollars. It's now around eight million dollars because construction costs in this city have wildly right. escalated um, and we've raised about six million which is pretty it's pretty, pretty great good, yeah. um, but we've got about two million to go um, and without finishing the second building we really really would be missing the boat um, the second building includes 79 units of housing but equally or maybe more important it includes 7,000 square feet of program space yes. for us right art studios computer labs the areas for yoga, Tai Chi. So we need a place where the entire community can come and get services. And that's what that $2 million is for. You're building a place where everybody living in the city, even we have folks who drive in from outside of the city to mm -hmm. engage in that community again, a place where they can go. That's so interesting. that's what we that. need. That's what we need your help with. And we'll get there. I yes. believe we can get there. Donate. <laughs> <laughs> And Sylvia um, oversees the Friendly Visitor Program, which I think is yeah. speaks so much to our mission yeah. and what we're doing. Absolutely. I'm, I'm so proud to be part of the Community Engagement Program. Um, it, it, you know, what Karen was saying, our community members, they're our heroes. You know, the stories they tell, the lived histories, the impact that they've had. Um, I always say it's, it's a gr you know, our volunteers are also the heart of our organization because we wouldn't be able to do a lot of the programming, have the 
groups facilitated, have our friendly visitor program if it weren't for volunteers. So, and that's a great opportunity to come into organization, whether it's coming in through the friendly visitor program. We recruit um, volunteers from all walks of life, all lived experiences, um, you know, and also, you know, we, most of our volunteers identify as LGBTQ. However, we welcome, welcome our straight allies. I was um, told that absolutely. at the absolutely. function yesterday at the nonprofit, and I said, oh, this is beautiful, but, and he goes, oh, no, but nothing. <laughs> to everyone and I was like I stand corrected he goes yes you do he was really cute and very sweet but I was way wrong and he handed me your newsletter which I have and he was like no 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 we're talking diversity you know our staff is diversity Um, you know I wasn't going to get into how you decide who lives there but he goes you know we talk about it We, we have a diverse yeah. yeah. At the folks that live at 55 Laguna, we have, it's LGBT welcoming, so we have probably about close to 70% who identify as LGBTQ, but we also have straight allies that live in the building as well. Oh, that's great. And we have 100% participation from all the folks that live in the building. 100%. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's really what he great. said. He there. said, everybody Amazing. comes to the table. How can yeah. we have a conversation if we're empty? We, right. Everyone has to be there. And I was just... Right. Okay. You walk through the doors <laughs> to our offices, yeah. and the person working reception to meet you, uh, we have uh, straight allies who live upstairs who are like, I want to be the person who greets people when they walk in, who volunteer their time to work our reception desk because oh, wow. of the kind of community that's being built. It's it's It's, it's like the world that we'd like it's to have. That's it's right. That's right. <laughs> wow. That's right. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, <laughs> Thank you both for coming on and talking about, I'm actually kind of excited. (laughs) I was like, can I put my name on the list somewhere? (laughs) (laughs) Give me me 20, 30 minutes. I know people. All right, all right. (laughs) Thank you so much for having us on. We appreciate it. Of course. Well, we put all the information down below so you guys can find out about Open House, the other resources that they have, any other programs, the new buildings, how you can donate and volunteer. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank Thank you. 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 We are so excited to have these two guests here today. Um, We're going to talk a little bit about each one, so bear with us for a second. You might be familiar with our guest over here. She is the Glitter Bomb TV's first glitter girl. I am. Yes. You have to go down below and check out my interview with BB Sweetbriar on G Bomb uh, after the show. Um, she's the San Francisco Queen of the Night as a local icon and idol. She's been Miss Gay San Francisco, Miss Desperate Diva, Queen Nine of Cruda Kink, and named Most Notable Drag Queen by SF90 Awards. She's released eight, dance, eight singles and her latest, Unity, which is currently at number 25 on the Billboard Dance Club play chart. She's a performer, hostess, and actress. You uh, may have heard her voice on her long-running uh, radio show, It's Everything, or read one of her columns in Fame by Edge Media or in Gloss or Luff magazines. If you want to see BB in person, then honestly just go outside in San Francisco any time of the day, because she's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get most notable drag queen of the year by staying home. No. <laughs> Everybody, please welcome Miss BB Sweetfire. Hi, hi, thank you. So great to <laughs> be here. I almost wore the exact dress that I wore on the first episode, but it's red, but it's not the same. That's dress. funny. Everybody's been doing it's that. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I almost did that, and I thought, mm, <laughs> it don't fit the way it used to. <laughs> Plus, you know, divas don't repeat, right? So that's what Well, this right. one does. This one does. <laughs> divas on a budget repeat. That's like, okay. <laughs> you may have seen our next guest on Happy Hour with Cameron Steele uh, as a guest host and a contributor. He is an award-winning out and proud music artist who has been writing, producing, and performing his brand of urban gay sex pop since since 2003. He has opened for RuPaul at Baltimore Gay Pride, and the release of his album, Don't Come In, made the examiner's 30 best songs you haven't heard. With eight albums to his credit, his latest album, Code Blue, is sexy electric dance perfection that is sure to be a fixture on your playlist. Everyone, please welcome Saturn. Hello. I'm so happy to finally be on the set. <laughs> He's been pining away. <laughs> We've been like talking about him here on, on the show for forever. <laughs> I know. Welcome. Thank yes, you so much. Welcome. I mean, you two are incredible. I mean, with the music business being the way it is, being LGBT artists, has, I'm sure, has its own pitfalls and greatness and everything in between. Talk about that. How is it being an artist? I think we'll have Saturn. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Well, I'll start. Yes. Um, um, Well, the music industry, we were kind of speaking about this in the green room that um, it's so different now. And 
and how you record and how the consumer buys the products are, are so different. And um, I'm sure Saturn will speak to this, you know, who, who's put out eight. You mentioned I've done eight singles. Well, Saturn's done eight albums. You know, people buy differently now, and, and I don't even know if they buy anymore. They kind of stream and listen. And, mm -hmm. and it's really affected on how artists can really make a living at just recording. Mm -hmm. Baby, I want to talk to you about your latest single. Oh, Unity. thank you. Oh, my gosh, we love thank it. Thank you. I love to talk about it. Oh, yeah. Way. And it you're back with Leo and the I whole. Am. Oh, my gosh. Tell, I tell, am. tell. Leo tell. Frappier and um, Knife and Fork, which um, is a production team made up of DJ Bushi mm -hmm. and William Ducati Brown and um, this single unlike any of the others um, was a single made with purpose and um, at a time you know the timing was perfect I mean everything's like that I think in life you know every, the stars have to align right and everything has to fall in place and this song literally fell in DJ Bushi in my lap um, we had been talking since Don't Ya, um, which I had released a year prior to that, about working together. Um, Knife and Fork did, um, did a remix on Don't Ya. So we thought, oh, we want to do our own thing. A year, like, just think, going through our head what we wanted to do. And one day, Bucci hit me up in a text and said, I think I have a song that we can do. And she goes, a friend of mine just said, do you remember this song? Because it's a cover tune from the 1993 or 92, something like that, when it was first done. But he, this person said, hey, do you remember the song that we used to like play all the time and, and send it to him? And so he sent it to me and I remember it. It was, used to be a song that people, uh, you would play more underground, but if you wanted to get your party popping, mm -hmm. cause it has that, it does. that mm -hmm. uplifting mm -hmm. spirit to it. Yeah. Um, you would play it and um, he played it for me or sent it to me and I played it and I just said, this is it. We need to not look any further. So that brings me to my next question. I, I, I want to know what it's like working with the producer because it's a collaborative process, but you know, who's, who's the boss? Is it always collaborative or is there, you know, is it ultimately BB's decision or is it really kind of this, um, you defer sometimes to the producer or? <laughs> um, well for I'm me, getting the dirt. I'm, I'm, one of the, well, I'm one of those artists that I know what I want and the bottom line in most of my cases is it's me. Uh, it's a presentation of me. Mm -hmm. um, now this particular, we've, we've put this out as me being a featured artist, um, but it's ultimately me. So yeah, I know that I voice what I want and work toward that, but I think it's also important then that you surround yourself with people who can work or have similar ideas or similar thoughts that the bottom line is that the product is the important thing and that we want it to be a, a true representation of our best work. And Saturn, listening to your new album, Code Blue, I mean, we're, we're listening to it in the layers of, of your writing, and, and I've seen your studio, so I've seen you twirl around in your chair playing all the keyboards singing, and then twirl. I mean, what is your process? How do you, you do it all yourself. I do. You don't have, you know. You know, I never wanted to be a producer. It kind of came out of necessity because I didn't have any money. <laughs> and I didn't know anybody. That's how things work. Yeah. I didn't have any money. I didn't know anybody. And I really wanted to put out like music because I've written hundreds and hundreds and hundreds mm -hmm. of songs. I'm like, this is something I'm destined to do. So I figured it out for myself. And but production has never been my my favorite thing. But I do feel like Cold Blue is probably the best produced thing I've done so far. As I've it really, I really kicked it up a notch this time. Oh, so yeah. When you're writing songs, what's your process? What are you thinking about? Where do you where do you go? Where do you? You know, for me, it starts with the melody. It starts with something I hear in my head, a tune, a beat, a feeling, and then once I have an idea for music, then I can put words on top of it and give it and give it a message. Uh, but yeah, it's always music first. Continuing on with that, so like video production, we a mm -hmm. lot of the magic happens in post. You know, we film it and then it all kind of comes together. Does that something similar? Like you you talk about writing the music and you don't necessarily like producing, you work with a lot of producers. Does the magic kind of happen when you get in there? Do, is something change? Is, what's the process like when you finally get into the studio and it starts oh, to come together? That's my favorite part. I love it. I, I love to get on there and go sing all the parts and, and do all the harmonies and the melodies and work with the sound engineer and mix it and get it just right. Yeah. Put all the effects on there and balance it all out. It's, it's like playtime. It's right? playtime. I <laughs> love that part of it. Yeah, that's my favorite part. And BB, same? Yeah, I, I, I love actually um, 
to being in the studio and, and seeing, you know, you usually start with a stripped down version of something, you know, mm -hmm. you've got the piano line basically that you may be working with. And like when I did I Want You Back, which I released last summer, um, and I, I wrote the song, and so it, w it was my melody, and I didn't have any music, so I, I can play an instrument, but I don't play the piano. And um, so I was like singing this, and I went into the studio with Leo, having him, given him an a cappella version, and he created the music as we recorded my vocals. Wow. And so it was like to see that grow, and he goes, oh, and I think I can put this in here, and I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! You know, and what was great about it is he did not mess with the integrity of my original song. Mm -hmm. It's the same melody, the same, you know, so I felt so good that we were able to work like that and put the song out that, you know, my baby, and, you know, I was like, oh, my God, that sounds so good. <laughs> and you didn't, like, say, well, we need to change the bridge or any of that. It was like, oh we kept it, you know. Wow. Now, now picture this. Yes. <laughs> Unlimited funds. You're on stage. Who are your backup singers and dancers, dead or alive? <laughs> Who would you oh be my like? God. Natalie Cole. Oh, yeah. oh. And Natalie Cole used to do all her backups and everything, and they were, you know, because you can you can harmonize with yourself. Same, right. same you know. Right. Mm -hmm. So I would have her, and um, even though a lot of people, I would probably put the old Mariah Carey. Okay. <laughs> yeah, anything you can. The, the yeah. old Mariah. Yeah. Carey. You mean the young Mariah? The, the original Mariah. Yeah. <laughs> the original uh, Mariah Carey uh, would be my backup because she can hit all the high notes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm still catching up from unlimited puns. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a dream. Um, <laughs> um, I'm not. Dead or alive. Dead or alive. Well, first of all, I'm not going to pick anybody that I actually love and admire because I don't want my backup uh, singers outdoing me. I need to be the <laughs> diva in front of the stage, so no, no, no. Well, Thank that'll you. Never happen. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. so I would, I would go out and have auditions and help somebody else in the community. And oh, them, that's uh, oh, like Miss America. Look at you that. being a giver. <laughs> I love it. Oh, tell us goodness. that you want world peace. Uh, He's right, right. He, right, Miss America. I am Miss America. I love that. <laughs> if if Miss America was a slut, <laughs> well, she probably is. Well, you know. So we were talking about um, getting into the studio and working with a producer. I wonder what it's like when have when you have a song remixed. Do you have a hand in that? Do you have a say in that? Do you? Oh, that's a good question. Because I know that you've been wanting uh, to have some of your stuff. I've remixed. had a couple of remixes. And on, okay. the, on yeah. this, on Unity, we have thirteen. Mm, that's um, we just released our third package um, of remixes and. Um, do we have a hand in that? No. But in selecting who you want to remix it, yeah, I do have. Uh, we we kind of collaborate, but I do choose the ones that I do. And I wasn't kidding when I said, if you want to see BB Sweetbriar in person, to literally just <laughs> go outside in San Francisco and walk around. Cause you're I'm like a this. porn star here. <laughs> <laughs> so I, find one every I wasn't every even country. going to attempt the list that you sent me of what's going on. So break it down, BB. Oh, Tell us what's going on. That. <laughs> I, I'm not as busy as I used to be, but um, every Wednesday, if anybody just wants to have a good time and experience um, people singing, every I do karaoke at the Midnight Sun um, every Wednesday fun. night. Yes. And finally, yes. I know, and I've missed you. I told I you that. It's I went to. We've had the best time. It is. Um, I'm a I'm a firm believer that karaoke is meant to be fun. And, yes. You know, and even though I we have some of some great singers that come up, even they have fun. I don't want it to be that serious you know this is not the voice <laughs> we are not on audition here. you don't win anything you know and some people get like you know i've been to places where they're like oh that's not the right version girl it's karaoke <laughs> you know and we have fun like mm -hmm. i get up there and i try songs i've never done before and i'll butcher them just like everybody else and we have fun and um so i measure my success on that on everybody laughing and being supportive of everyone else's yes. fun yeah you know nice. and that's yeah. what we do so if you are into that you need to come and have a great time so we put all the information down below so you can check out where to go see them perform where to download their music and everything um thank you both for being here thank, so you. thank you so much 100 episodes <laughs> <laughs> and saturn everyone <laughs> That's it for this week's G News, the only show we get all of your gay in just one day with your hosts, Celsa Dulé and Lisa Cohen. We'd like to thank The Lookout for hosting us again for our 100th episode, and we'd like to thank you for watching. We hope to see you at number 200. And help us get there by liking, sharing, and subscribing. Yes, we are still trying to get to a thousand subscriptions, so please subscribe. That way you will never miss an episode. 
Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye. Hey, everybody. Welcome to a very special Genie. Wow. That we. How was that? That we? Yeah. That we? That we? I thought I was having problems. That Hello, everyone. Welcome to. G News. One more time. I'm like, it's out. 100, 100, 100. Hello, everyone. Welcome to a very special episode. 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 Wow. All of our bloopers at one time. This is great. Jimmy, if you could just like walk by with glasses in your hand like you're working, it would be perfect. Do you want to know how to say my last name? I, uh, I hope I said it correctly because I've already announced you before oh, you got here. How do you say it? Um, skull teddy. Like a skull and a teddy bear. That's exactly how I said it. Yeah. That's skull teddy! Hey. How do people mispronounce skull, it? Skull teddy. 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 I get a gold star. I also have to recognize he signed more bills than any governor preceding him. We had a we had a <laughs> costume malfunction. <laughs> <laughs> I just had a Janet Jackson back in. <laughs> All it, Arnold Schwarzenegger, blame it on oh, him. Right. <laughs> Camera I. Excuse me, sir. Beep. Is it is it your honor, at Mayor? Your honor, your Your Excellency. Your Excellency. <laughs> your Excellency. <laughs> Got nice. it. Nice. <laughs> but yeah. Interview's done. This is your excellency. <laughs> Walk Got out it. of the room backwards. <laughs> yeah. Mark works. Oh, <laughs> Mark works. <laughs>